everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. This is the first video in a series. We're going to make the Kimber Bell. This is Happy Hoop Decor Volume 2 Christmas Nativity Ornaments. This is a great project if you have a smaller embroidery machine that only has a 4x4 hoop. I'm going to be making mine in a 5x7 hoop and we will start with this one, the O Little Town of Bethlehem. This is a great set of ornaments because we're going to start with the simplest one that only uses two thread colors and a little piece of mylar to put the sparkle. See the sparkle behind the star? Isn't that pretty? It's just so cute. I'm going to put a little bit of glue underneath this little piece of fabric right here and I still have to put, I'm going to hot glue a piece of trim around the outside and add a little bow right there for the ornament. But if you are new to embroidery or you have an embroidery machine and you haven't used it a whole lot and you want to build your skills, this set is going to use fringe, chenille, raw edge applique, cut work, and mylar. And if you don't know what any of that is, don't worry about it. I'll walk you through every step. And the only thing you really need to get in addition to your fabric and the CD, and I will link to all of this below, the video, is you're going to want to buy some mylar. Mylar is like clear, it's like a uh, iridescent, it's not clear, well it's kind of clear, iridescent cellophane wrapping paper. And I bought a, a roll of it on Amazon and just cut the little pieces that we need. So uh, I think this is a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing this uh, video series with you. So I hope you join me. If you like this series, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel a whole lot. Let's get started. Okay, to make this project, we're going to be making the O Little Town of Bethlehem Nativity Ornament. And I am using a four inch bamboo hoop. So I am going to have to make this in the five by seven embroidery hoop because I enlarged the design a little bit. If you're using the Kimber Bell three and a half inch wooden hoop, you can do this in a four by four. You're going to need your background fabric. You're going to need a piece of mylar. Mylar is an iridescent looking piece of cellophane, really is all it is. And I used cello wrap. I'll link to it below. Very easy, very inexpensive. And of course you're going to want a uh, firm surface to be able to trim the mylar away and you're going to want a pair of curved embroidery scissors. These are gingers. I'll link to everything below. On the luminaire we're going to go to embroidery and the pocket for the memory and I'm going to go to the wireless icon and here is Bethlehem 1. I receive a notice that says it doesn't include enough thread information. That's okay. We know the thread uh, that we're going to use. I'm just going to tell it okay. I'm going to hit set and embroidery and we're ready to get started. So I'm going to put my hoop in the machine. Very easy to do. Whenever you have an embroidery arm, let me back this out a little bit so you can see. Whenever you have an embroidery arm like this, as you slide the hoop in and out, you always want to put your hand on it right here and that will prevent that arm from accidentally moving at all. You don't want that to happen. To thread the machine, I'm using Isocord embroidery thread. This is white and I'm using an Organ 7511 needle and I'm using a pre-wound embroidery thread bobbin. I buy them in a box of 144 at a time on Amazon. To thread the machine, I like to put it through this thread guide up here. You do not have to do that, but this is just me. Each thread guide is numbered. So you go under number one, it shows you to go under. It has a picture on here, you cannot do this wrong. You go down number two, come back up number three, go around number four, come down number five. Number six is behind a little clasp right there. And number seven is actually on the little neck of this flange right here. And you're supposed to pull it up and pull it off like that and that will cut the right length you need to thread your needle and then 
all you need to do is press the thread your needle button. As long as this is green, we are ready to go. Now this will be hard to see because it's in white and I will try to get you in close so you can watch it. I think I'm going to use navy blue to do the tack down stitch and the final zigzag stitch around the outside. So I'm going to change my threads. Let me show you how I do that. To do a thread color change, all I do is, so here's that first guide I like to go through. I'm going to reach behind the guide. I'm just going to do one single knot, a single loop like this, pull it tight, and then grab the thread down here at the needle and pull it through. And once I've pulled the knot through, I just cut it off and thread the needle again. What you need to do is get your fabric so that it completely covers the placement line all the way around. That's the point of the placement line is to make sure and to double check you can kind of lift up and make sure you're covered under here on all four sides. You want to make sure you're covered. The pattern called for a 5 by 5 inch square. I cut mine 6 by 6 simply because I am making this a little bit larger than is required. Here is stitch number two. You do not want to trim your outer fabric away from the stitch line just yet. Leave it right where it's at. And I'm going to change my thread color again. Watch how quick this is when you do this. Pretty soon you'll be an expert. Do a single loop, little single knot, pull it through. Okay, it's time for the placement line for the mylar. You see how it has a little tail right there? That's okay. You can stop it. Don't be afraid to stop it. Sometimes that happens. And get your scissors in there. Pull that out and trim it. Mylar down. Make sure the entire stitch is covered. Now you need to pull away the mylar from around the outside of the star. It should have perforated enough to pull up very easily. I'm going to go ahead and remove the hoop from the machine and I'm going to take these curved scissors and the curved scissors what they do is they prevent you from cutting into your stitching. And you want to get as close to that outer stitching as possible so that you know that your satin stitch will cover it. Whenever I get gift bags that have mylar in it as like a little holder, you know, or a stuffing in a gift bag, I always save that so I can use that in uh, these kinds of designs. Why buy it if you can get it given to you in a gift? Oh, that's so pretty. The picture does not do it justice. Now it's time for the letters. If your machine does not have the ability to cut 
jump threads as it is stitching like that one just did, then you're going to need to be sure to trim the jump threads after the design is finished. All finished. It's always the details that make a design nice. So right here we've got a jump stitch. If you have jump stitches, one of the easiest ways to get rid of them is think about how the needle went from point A to point B. There is a natural pull from A to B, so if you clip B first, A will stand straight up. Did you see how that happened? Then it's easy to get a hold of. Sometimes if you clip A first, it'll just kind of lay there. It doesn't give you the uh, it doesn't give you the nice bounce where it'll stand up. Take a little extra time to take care of those jump threads and clean them up. It will just make your project look so much more professional, especially with lettering. You get these tiny little scissors from a company called Tooltron. I'll put a link below. Um, that's where I buy all of my specialty scissors that I need like this for embroidery. Didn't this come out nice? Can you see the iridescent? That's what Mylar does behind your design. Isn't that beautiful? That turned out so nice. I'm very pleased with it. To finish this out, you're going to want to use a pair of duck build scissors. And you always want to cut your project so that the fabric falls away from you. So turn it upside down so that the duck bill is on the bottom. And you can see the fabric and just trim. The duck bill will prevent you from cutting into the fabric, but just trim around. Don't cut the fabric yet. We're just cutting the stabilizer at this time. You can use regular scissors for this. Just using a duck bill is a little bit safer to make sure you don't accidentally cut a little nick into your project. But you want the stabilizer on the top and the fabric to the bottom. There. Now. I want to have a nice pretty back and so I've cut another piece of fabric the same size as the project fabric and I'm just going to put it wrong sides together just like that. Not going to use any kind of adhesive or anything. You want to take your inner ring and position your project over so that it's pretty well centered on the inner ring. You want to have your outer ring as wide as possible. You want to center where the screw is going to go at the top. Now you want to take your scissors and trim as close as possible. And if you want to, you could leave a little extra and hot glue that in. I'm just going to trim it flush with the back edge of the ring. Oh, well, that turned out great. I might use a little bit of glue up under here to kind of glue this down flat. I'm going to also use a glue gun to glue trim around the outside and put a little bow at the top. Oh, this looks great, you guys. I hope you had a lot of fun making this with me. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.